quite on board, it really is. It's Wednesday, 17th of July, <clears throat> and this morning we're heading all the way over to Brisbane to catch up with our very good friend, yeah, Brisbane, Australia, before 10 o'clock in the morning. We're, yeah, it doesn't happen often, but we do have an Australian up at 8.15 in the morning. Well, a little later anyway. So, let me do this. That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, and today we're talking to Will Clavin, coming from the band Black Whiskey, and uh, yeah, it's been a minute since we've known each other, we've, you know, been promoting each other a number of years now, and it's always, always a pleasure to have the brother man back. Got to welcome everybody on board this morning, it is nice to have you on board, you're a first time listener, a viewer, <laughs> sorry, radio, first time viewer. Well, I tell you what, why not do this? Why not sub, thumb, and bell? Bingo. Uh, bell notifications when we have important people, much like Will Clayton from the band Black Whiskey. Subscribe. Become part of the family. We call it the noise here at Galaxy, literally, because we do hear you. You do send us all your medias. You really do. And we listen. We respond, too. And we even have been known to change a few shows because of it. We really have. In the meantime, <clears throat> you know what to do with the thummy thing, right? You do get epileptic with it. So, I tell you what, let's kick the show off. Here's Black Whiskey, new music at Galaxy. Here's Bone Shaker. <sighs> so, well, that gives us a couple of minutes. Yeah, that last track that you played when it first started and I heard the the sort of the beat of it and then the saxophone keep down. I thought, don't tell me there's some new music out by Sharon O'Neill because that would be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually Dream Frey. <coughs> it just had that Sharon and like that old 80s, that that like Maxine type. Yeah. It sounded really cool. I'm like, because I really, I'm a big fan of Sharon's. Okay. And I thought, oh, no, this would be cool. And then I thought, oh, hang on, no, it's not, it's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I actually did one show with Sharon O'Neill back in the day. She is really, I met her twice back in the 80s when she was over here. Um, she's a really lovely person, yep. really nice person, and talented too, and such a great songwriter, really good songwriter. She was a friend of my then girlfriend. Uh, have you ever heard of Margaret Ehrlich? Yes. Well, Sharon and Margaret were like peas in a pot at one stage. Oh, okay. And uh, I think that was because Margaret was part of a band called The Cats Away back in those days. And I was engineering them. Uh, she got together with Margaret, and we did a couple of couple of shows, if you know what I mean. And uh, yeah. lovely lady, absolutely Very lovely nice. lady. <clears throat> yeah, she had that. She had that time of doing some backing vocals on um, some of the Dragon tracks back in the day oh, too, okay. which was very cool. Yes, yes. Another, another big band I'm a fan of too is, is Dragon. So mm. you've got some. You've had some really good music come out of New Zealand, believe me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's a story behind that one too. Uh, I'll tell you off air, okay? <laughs> because um, uh, the lead singer died of throat cancer, if you remember. Yes. Yes. I know, how got, I know how he got it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. Um, and have you ever heard of an artist called Prince Tuiteka? No, I haven't. Okay, well, he used to have a, um, a very, very big... Maori entertainer. He used to hang out with uh, Howard uh, Howard Jones. What's his name? Morrison. No. Mo yeah, Howard Morrison. Um, mm. he, and he was a Maori guy too. He says he he got an award, and he says he's an ordinary brown entertainer. Okay. <laughs> okay. But um, <clears throat> Prince Tui Tekka and um, Queenie, very famous. They ended up moving to Newcastle. And oh, okay. having a, a ranch or a farm there where they had this huge old uh, aircraft hangar that they turned into a nightclub. But oh. it was selective, literally really selective. You only went there to practice for your oh. tours. Go, you know, if you're going off country or around the country or something, that's where you went to practice your tour. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. And he taught so many engineers, so many things. He taught Jimmy Barnes to scream. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, Johnny Farnham, Diesel, 
honestly, there were so many um, <clears throat> Col Chisel and Jimmy Barnes were, you know, they they really perfected it right there on that red shed. That's right, you're right, here we go, C107 FM, and today we're talking to Will from the band Black Whiskey, and Will, welcome back. And thanks for having me, guys, good morning to you, it's a, a chilly 8 degrees here in Brisbane at the moment, but we've got to do something first thing in the morning, so how are we all? Yeah, not, <laughs> not too bad, not too bad, it is 12.4 uh, here, so uh, we're not doing too bad, I suppose, compared to 8 degrees. Uh, but I was looking in the news yesterday, one part of Australia was snowing. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, and apparently they might get a little bit more either tonight or tomorrow morning early, so it's winter's definitely here, uh, and it's windy as anything. I think it's all that stuff coming up from down south. Yeah. Uh, so I've got to get out and back in the pool again. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, at least you've got to pull where you can back in. Yeah. <laughs> Dear idea. Uh, I've got a number of jokes about that one, but I'm not even going to go there right now. Uh, we opened up the show with Bone Shaker. Now, believe me, I'm absolutely love, love, loving this track. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, we just sort of sat down and we, we didn't want to go like, you know, there's some stereotypical type songs that we had on the EP about, you know, girls and music. and all. So we just sort of, let's just write a song about just getting in a car and just just driving the hell out of it and turn, cranking the tunes on the radio and, and just forgetting about life and just being in the moment. And that's sort of how that came about and it, it evolved into what, what it is on the album. But you, i got to be honest with you, Will, when I first heard Bone Shaker, for instance, I instantly went music to drive fast to. That's the, that's the vibe we were going for, so it's done its job. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, believe me, I, I interpreted that instantly. I really did. And I've got to be honest, I actually do have it in my car. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go too fast. Well, no, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to share it with the rest of the neighbourhood, as I do. <laughs> yeah, I've got to kick our stereo in my car, I've got to be honest. Uh, now, Very at the cool. same time, this is off your new album, and believe me, uh, I think it would be remiss of me if I didn't say... Let's have the skinny on how we can get hold of you, uh, all the websites, all the uh, links, everything like that, because we want to be able to not only purchase this, but maybe some merch. Sure. Well, uh, the album has now been released digitally, so it's available on all the, I think it's all the major platforms. I know it's, it's on Spotify, Apple Music, I think Amazon, like, or, or just, yeah, whichever is your favourite one, I think you'll find it there. Um, <laughs> you can still get physical copies of the CD if you would like one from the website. So all you've got to do is uh, go to the band's website and all those links are available from our Facebook page. If you search Black Whiskey, Oz, or AUS, on Facebook, you'll find us and just go down to the links and it'll take you to our website. Go to the merch page, we've got T-shirts, uh, we've got stubby coolers. We might even have some beanies left for the cool weather. Um, and a couple of we've got an album T-shirt that's in there as well with the with the uh, front cover artwork on the shirt. So yeah, if you're interested, send us a line and we ship internationally and, and we'll drop you whatever you like to get. Absolutely, brilliant. you know. Well, now I'm going to say, how about sending me a beanie and a T-shirt? Can do. I shall do that. I'll get it in the post tomorrow once I've had some sleep. Oh, I'll I'll get Barbara to forward you all the details there and. Uh, Believe me, because people do look at who I'm wearing at the time, and I've, I've actually had people contact me saying, Grant, why are you doing the interview? I'm actually shopping, <laughs> because I like that T-shirt you're wearing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, it does and has happened in the past. It really, really has. So uh, there you go. Absolutely brilliant. What one? Really do. Uh, now, having said that, the album, Last Temptation, how did you come to the name of this? 
We were just sitting in the studio and just tossing around names and thought, oh, no, that sounds... Don't like that. It's been done before. That sounds too cliched. And then I was flicking through some pages and I found it was actually a piece of... Um, like it was a church window, stained glass church window, and it was a picture of the old Adam and the Apple scene. And like the last... And it just sort of flourished from there, that last temptation. Cool title. Don't want to be sort of go too religious with it, but we sort of... Yeah... The, the stained glass was the original idea for the cover, but we sort of came up with the other artwork and it just rolled on. It just, it seems to have worked. So, yeah, it's Last Temptation and rock and roll has got to be someone's Last Temptation. Well, I've got to be honest with you, I think it's mine because I, right now, <clears throat> off the album, this is the one I'm going to all the time. I've got to be honest with you. I'm loving this. Uh, not more than the others, but equally as much. And in fact, uh, I think this one's on speed dial, because every time I turn on the stereo, that's playing, <laughs> so you never know. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us live is Will Clayford from the band Black Whiskey, and here's Last Temptation. <laughs> ah, dear, oh dear, oh dear. It is warming up in here, I've got to be honest with you. <coughs> Let me just... Pop that there. There we go. I didn't realise Brisbane got cold. No. Eight degrees. It does get cold. It does. It really does. It does get cold, but it's unusually cold this week because it's windy as well. Right. I mean, we get down to single digits, you know, nine, eight, and that might be one off here or there, but this has been like this for the last week and it's just ridiculously cold. Well, I found out something the other day that I had no idea about, but I absolutely love it. I do. Um, a band back in the late 60s, early 70s, into the 80s, took their name from an act that the Aborigines used to do. Okay. In the winter time, if it was a cold night, they would sleep with a dog. And if it was an extra cold night, they would sleep with two dogs. And if it was a bitterly cold night, well, that's where Three Dog Night got their name from. <laughs> it's quite true. It's honest. It really is. Google it, you'll find it. <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, by the way, I've got a question for you. know Trumpy getting his ear pierced the other day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder if the Secret Service said, Donald, duck! <laughs> no, that's going already. And he did, too. He did. <laughs> I know, he popped his head up and went, where? Yeah, well, afterwards, you know, Come they're on, trying quiet. to protect him and he's being stupid. Quiet, quiet. He should yeah, have just kept his head down. Yeah, you can that as a poster, as a T-shirt, as a wallpaper. Oh, just... History. I mean, I lived in the States for, like, seven years, and I know how politically insane it can get over there. Just... <laughs> It's just over the top. It completely is. It really is. And, well, you know something? I think he's going to win it. Yeah, I do too, actually. I, I, I don't think... Well, our, our mate sort of... Old Biden, he's um, he's headed for the retirement village by the looks of it. He's, they just keep propping him up and propping him up and he just keeps falling to the side. Yeah. So, unfortunately... <laughs> it's like a couple of <laughs> others I've worked with. <laughs> they've got no one that the yeah. people will back to replace him. Exactly. Uh, now they've got four more, or three more years, four more years to be able to find somebody, so. That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, and today we're talking to Will Clayford <clears throat> from the band Black Whiskey, coming out of Brisbane, Australia. And, uh, well, I, I think, you know, the reason why uh, Biden won't step down right now is that uh, his vice president is a female. And that right, scares the living hell out of all, all Americans. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. Hillary Clinton would have got it. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just don't want to be run by a female. I think they won't let him step down in 
catchy calls. <laughs> no, but I tell you what, they're going to mummify the guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll just pop him up in the corner, you know, I'll ask the president, and he's nodding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weekend of Bernie's. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting state of affairs, isn't it? Oh, it's <laughs> weird. It is, well, to be honest with you, uh, there's particular photos there of Trumpy holding his hand up. They will be put down in the annals of history. Absolutely. You yeah. know, and we'll be able to say, hey, I saw that on television, much like the 9-11. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Exactly. It's, it's true. And regardless of what people think of the man, I mean, he's very, very lucky. Put it that way. He's yeah, he is. he is. And you can see there was a natural reaction when he swiped at his ear. He thought something had actually bitten him. Yeah. It wasn't yeah, until yeah. seconds later that he realised that he had been shot at. Yeah. But They're still looking into, you know, there's a whole heap of investigations going on, so we'll see what comes out of that. But at the end of the day, lucky man. Yeah. Be alive. True yeah. story, uh, the young man that actually shot him, and this is absolutely true, it was in the news the other day, uh, he failed and was kicked out of his gun club at school. I've heard that last night, actually. Yeah, he couldn't yeah. hit it. He couldn't hit anything. Evident, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. evident. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, but look, you know, I'm glad Trump is back in the news. I really am, because I was getting a little dry on somebody to pick on. <laughs> no, I've been in it for a while now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've got another four or five years worth of run now. This guy, I really have. Yeah. I'm loving it. I did see it was quite interesting that the, the Secret Service and that was sort of panicking because where they're having their national rally, it's an open carry state, so anyone can carry a gun. <laughs> Absolutely. So, mm, yeah, that's about as ridiculous. And, and believe me, uh, have you ever heard of a uh, documentation maker by the name of Michael Mora? Yes. He went and opened up a bank account to receive his very first gun. Mm. Open an account, get a gun. Now, what bank does that? That's a bit, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've got all my licences over here because I, I do club shoot competition. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so, so strict. Mm. Yep. It's such a long, long process just to go through, just to get your licence. I mean, I think it was from start to finish for my handgun licence was almost 18 months. So it's a, And then you've got to do all these things to keep them. As well, you don't just get them, you've got to compete and have a number of competitions under your belt. So it's a big drawn out process, but if you do it legally and you, and you do it right, then it's okay. Well, you know, weapons are only weapons in the wrong hands. Exactly. You yeah. know what I mean? I, mean, I, yeah, I, I know. And people have different opinions on it. I might sort of think, well, put a gun on the kitchen table and see how long it takes to shoot someone. Yeah, exactly. Well, believe me, uh, I do have weapons and I have actually been considering. Uh, Amnesty turning them out. I, I very rarely use them anymore. Literally, I used to go out hunting all the time with my girls when they were younger. Uh, they got old, my legs gave out, you know what I mean? Uh, part of a gun club, yes I am. Uh, but, you know, I'm considering moving these out of my house now, you know what I mean? I don't find the same connection to them as I used to. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've been talking about it with Barbara for a number of years and with Terry, you know, saying, hey, listen, I think it's time that we uh, got this out of here. You know what I mean? Because, mm. believe me, when my father died, and he was a crazy guy in his own right, he used to blow stuff up for a living, legally, <laughs> you know. Um, when he passed away, we went through his shed, and he had three up three bullets there from the Second World War that had turned into nitroglycerin. Oh, wow. You know, they were that fragile. <laughs> Honestly, uh, we got the uh, army in to remove those, and, uh, well, I got the pleasure of blowing the stuff up, because, believe me, after my father, I was the foremost expert uh, in, in the whole part of uh, the South Island of New Zealand, which was weird. I was only about 13 years of age, and I knew more than the experts did. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Bought up with it. I was down the coal mines, <laughs> five years of age, blowing stuff up for my dad. So, second nature, it really was. In the meantime, I do have to wrap this up. Well, I really, really appreciate you taking the time out uh, to come and see us. But I do have one thing I want to ask you is, I know that Last Temptation is a new album, and I've got the whole shebang playing in my car. I would love to be able to do a full, uh, full interview, maybe five or six tracks, 
that we haven't already done. Absolutely. Oh, I'd love to do that. Yeah, because everyone seems to have their... Like, even the guys in the band have their own personal favourite tracks. Um, mine happens to be Demon's High, which I really mm -hmm. enjoy. And, um, Joe, my missus, is Vixen. So everyone, Alan's got... He's like Bone Shaker and that. So everyone's got their own favourite track, which is good. Mm. It gives you a bit of diversity. Absolutely. It really does. It's a mixed bag and, you know, so like each and every one... As I said, I can't distinguish which I like more. Just so happens every time I turn the car stereo on, Last Temptation comes up. <laughs> it really does. So, um, believe me, on the way home, absolutely rocking it. Rocking no, it. You know, so. Well, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Love, love, love Black Whiskey. And please, use the interwebby folks. Go and check them out. They're in Brisbane, Australia. Black Whiskey. You can't go wrong. You really can't. These guys are good. They really are. In the meantime, have a very happy and successful day. Join myself and Barbara for the breakfast show between 5, 5 in the morning and 10 o'clock. We'd love to have you. In the meantime, though, have a very happy and successful, uh, successful day. Happy radio, everyone.